This here is the M2 iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch version. And I've had this here for a couple of weeks. Recently, I decided to put this up to the iPad Pro Travel Challenge and see if this device can serve all of my needs while I'm traveling and act as my sole device to feed all of my digital endeavors. And so I'll have that review with you, go over my thoughts as we get into this video today. So thank you for joining me. I'm your boy, Paul, and I'm an ordinary guy who's living an extraordinary life. And on my channel, I just like to share my journey with you, go over any of my lessons learned, tools, trips, resources, and kind of share with you that journey. So part of that journey that my wife and I has been on lately is just looking to expand our circle of friends and networks and to be able to go out and travel a little bit. So recently we've, took an, we've taken a few trips and I find that the more trips that I take, the more frustrated I get with all the digital gadgets and devices that I have to take. Now, admittedly, um, I'm a little obsessive. I'm a serial side hustler, so I have a lot of different projects going on. I don't know when the muse is going to hit me to work on any particular project at any time. So anytime we travel, I want to make sure that I'm able to do my reading. I want to make sure I'm able to do my full-time job. I want to make sure I'm able to check my emails, make sure I can do all of my creative stuff, make sure I'm able to do any editing, creating content, all that type of fun stuff. But what I've found is that lately, as we've been doing that, the bag is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So recently, my babes and I decided to kind of escape. We went on an excursion to the getaway house, which is a luxury cabin out in the woods. Spent a couple of days just trying to reconnect uh, with nature, reconnect with each other and try to disconnect. But even in doing so, I thought that, you know, I may want to do some reading. I may want to do some writing while I'm out there. And so I found that even in that situation, I packed a lot of gadgets. And so when we got back from that, I said, you know what? I need to, I need to get a handle on this. This is getting a little out of control. And so I decided to do some research and I thought the iPad Pro might be able to serve my needs. So I'll, I'll go over a couple of details as to how I came about this decision, what I'm doing. Right. Recently, I decided to embark on a journey of writing my book. Now, this is something that's been on my heart for a couple of years, but I decided to really get into it. So I really want to be able to dive in and take my notes and do my writing. And I really love the feel of writing on a tablet. So I want to make sure at any time I'm going anywhere, I want to have the ability to make sure I take my notes and be able to write on the tablet. Second thing I do is video creation. So I, you know, when I'm doing running gun type of shoots or I'm out vlogging or out in nature, just kind of on the you know, on the streets, <laughs> if you will. Uh, my main camera is really my camera on my iPhone 13 Pro. I use that for those quick snapshots to catch those action photos. It's always with me, it's there, it's convenient. But I find that oftentimes getting the videos from my iPhone to my Windows computer is kind of a clunky process. And depending on how you do it, some things work, some things don't work. It takes a couple of times. I just got eventually a little frustrated with trying to make that transfer happen. So the iPad I thought would be great for that because of the um, AirDrop, be able to drop it in. I also wanted to make sure that I was able to connect if I was somewhere that it didn't offer Wi-Fi. I don't want to have to rely on the Wi-Fi of hotels because of the security and things like that. So I did go ahead and get, make sure I got the version that had the uh, 5G cell phone through, through Verizon so I can make sure I'm connected anywhere I go. I also do a lot of reading, so I want to make sure that I'm able to access my Kindle app on it, make sure it's nice and comfortable for reading. Also want to make sure that I have what I need for productivity. Every day I have a process where I go through all of my Airtable uh, databases, check my finances, balance my accounts, make sure I have access to that. I also work on a lot of dashboards and templates and I have my calendar, my journal and Notion. So I want to make sure I'm able to access that. And then last but not least is my editing. Recently, I adapted the uh, DaVinci Resolve platform. I really bought into it. I got the speed editor. You know, if you watch the channel, you see I did a video kind of teasing this here a couple months ago where I'm kind of making that transition. It's a learning curve, but it has so much potential. I really bought into it. So I bought some of the plugins and things like that to kind of hone in on this skill. So I wanted to make sure anything that I had was able to help me support that. I wanted to do any editing while I was on the road. The iPad seemed like it was a logical choice. Everybody that I watched on YouTube talking about the Vinci Resolve on the iPad Pro, that is a pretty phenomenal experience. So we wanted to see how that worked. So that was kind of my, my thinking behind it. So when my babes came to me the other day and she said, hey honey, we have an opportunity to go to Houston. An influencer friend of mine is having a meet and greet. So we had the opportunity to go out there for a couple days. I thought this was the perfect opportunity for me to go ahead, pack up the iPad Pro and see whether or not this was going to work as my sole gadget when I travel. When time came, babes and I, we packed up our stuff and we were headed out. The first thing I noticed is that because it is light, 
and small, it was real easy for me to pack in my personal luggage. I don't know about you, you may be a little bit more privileged than I am, but oftentimes when I'm flying, I'm not flying first class. And sometimes it's some of these more economy lines like Spirit or Frontier. Guys, the airlines have gotten ridiculous with their charges. You can't even bring a carry-on anymore. If you want to bring a carry-on, it's going to cost you an extra $50, $60. So anywhere we, anytime we travel, when we can, we try to consolidate everything to just like a personal item, which you know for a guy is mostly a backpack. I found that the iPad Pro worked well for me. I was able to put this in my backpack, no problem at all, pack a couple days worth of clothes on top of that. And it fit nice. So it worked really nice for me. It was comfortable for me to put the backpack on, walk through the airport, take it in and out and use it. So, you know, first thumbs up for that. It worked really well for that. One thing I did not like though was the case that I got for the iPad. Now it's a pretty good case. I mean, I like the blue. You can see it themed throughout my, my office here, but it's a nice hard case. You know, it works for what it you need it for. You can put your your uh, Apple Pencil on the top. It charges it. But what I find is that when you're traveling, this isn't a good look because it's real easy for this pencil to fall off. I found that as I was even packing it in the backpack, it would kind of catch on things. It would fall off. So I had to make an adjustment. I had to swap. I have my new case coming, which is one that actually has a place where you actually put the, the, the Apple Pencil inside. So that's going to solve that problem. I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out. Um, but hopefully that'll solve that problem going forward. So everything went well. I found it was easy to take out on a plane. It wasn't so encumbersome if I was sitting on the flight. I had it on my lap. I was able to do what I wanted to do. If I wanted to take any notes, I was able to use the pencil so that it worked well for me. Once we got to the hotel and we unpacked and we were relaxing, took up very little real estate. So I didn't find myself having to spread out on his large desk. I mean, I could set it up if I wanted to set it up. I could sit back and relax I'm on the sofa, sit on the chair, on the bed, what have you, you know, whatever configuration I wanted to put it in. It worked well for me. So I did find that it was very comfortable. I found that the writing experience was really nice when I sat down to write my notes. Um, it was comfortable. I researched a couple of writing apps. If you want more details on it, I'll go ahead and give you a review on that. But the one that I chose was Nebo and I chose it just because it works really well on the iPad. It supports the Apple Pencil. You can also type if you want. It helps you convert text to type. Um, so a lot of features. You can change the background color, change the color of the pen. So it works well for me. And what was an additional plus, and I didn't really realize this until I got into it, is that with the, the new OS 16 system, Stage Manager now allows you to open up multiple apps and have them on the screen at the same time. This was a game changer for me because typically if I was to want to read on my Kindle app, I would get my Kindle. I would have my Kindle and then I would have to have my laptop or something else next to me to take notes. What I found, the iPad Pro is big enough where I'm able to open up my Kindle on one side and have the Nebo app on the other side and I'm able to take notes while I'm reading. That worked phenomenal. That was a game changer for me because now I can sit there and read my books, take my notes so I can do my reviews. And if you want to see any, any book reviews here on this channel, there's a playlist link down below. Self plug. Now I was also able to, of course, watch movies. I was able to you know, surf the internet, um, all seamlessly, things that you would expect with the iPad. All that worked well. Um, I was a little skeptical on how Airtable, Notion, and Canva would work. Uh, what I found is that it takes some getting used to. <laughs> it definitely takes some getting used to because it's a touch interface versus a regular mouse keyboard interface, but it does work. So the experience, although wasn't what I was used to, I think what some getting used to, I could definitely make it work. You know, if I was to add maybe a keyboard or a mouse to it, it would definitely be phenomenal, but I wanted to keep everything very low and light and streamlined. Another thing that was huge for me was the ease of transferring all of my content from my phone to my iPad. You know, I took a lot of videos, a lot of shorts, a lot of footage, and it was just a nightmare in the past trying to get it off the phone, to, you know, downloading it to a, a, a a cloud drive, uploading it to the computer, putting it in a program. It was just a nightmare. Now I can just use the AirDrop directly from my phone to the iPad. It's simple, it's fast, it's seamless. That saved me hours. You don't understand how much of a game changer that was for me. Um, the last thing I wanted to, to be able to do is make sure that if I had some time, if it was a longer trip, I want to make sure I was able to edit while I was on the go. 
that's always been a problem for me because the Surface Pro I had just didn't have enough power to it to handle what you need for DaVinci Resolve. So all the reviews and all the videos I watched about DaVinci Resolve on the, on the iPad said it worked well. So I wanted to give it a try. I took it with me. I went out on a limb, said, let's go ahead and download it, play around with it a little bit while I'm away, see if it works. And guys, it's phenomenal. I mean, it really worked for me. I found it a lot faster than it was working on my computer. It was easy. The touch interface was nice being able to use the, the Apple Pencil. Again, really nice experience. It worked well for me. And of course, I was able to check all of my emails, right? With the apps, I have Microsoft email. I have Outlook email. I have Gmail accounts. I have business accounts. All that seamless experience with the iPad Pro. Um, so all in all, I was very happy with the experience. Um, coming back from it, there's a couple lessons that I learned. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the cons because it's not perfect, right? First of all, I did mention the situation with the pen. Um, the pen, if you're depending on what type of case you have, it can come off. I know it's magnetized, but like I said, it was real easy for when I was slipping it into my um, backpack. It came right off and when I was going through my clothes, when I was bringing it out, when I got to the hotel, I really had to search and go through my clothes to try to find it there at the bottom. Got scared for a minute that it might be lost. And so you definitely want to make sure you have the right case for it, but they're not that expensive. I mean, I spent $10 on this one. I spent $25 on a replacement that's going to have the place for me to actually put the, the pen inside. So no harm done there, guys. Or if you're, if you're going all out and you get the magic keyboard, obviously everything is there for you. You don't have to worry about it. Um, which brings me to the second point. The, the, the user experience is much different than you're used to on a laptop. I mean, you know, no keyboard, no mouse. I did it specifically just to make sure that if I travel with just a device, whether I'll be able to do it. I made it work, but I missed the mouse. I missed the keyboard. And so if I wanted to make sure I have all that with me next time that I travel, it's going to add some bulk to, to my packing. Um, I really like to be able to travel light. It works. I was able to manipulate it to get it to work. You know, what I found it really difficult is when I got into like Notion and Airtable and trying to move data around, you know, change or mess around with my dashboards and stuff. I got a little wonky using my fingers and, and, and typing on, on the actual iPad itself. But ultimately, it worked. But I would recommend that you kind of have a keyboard. And uh, for me, I need a mouse. I mean, it's... I know it's designed to work without a mouse, but having the mouse is just so much better. I think I would definitely pack a mouse with me next time. Um, another, another downside is that even with the mouse, the mouse experience is a little bit different, right? Because it's the, you know, the way that the, the, the cursor looks when you're moving the mouse around. And I found that with my, my Logitech mouse, the, the scroll wheel is different on how it moves the page up and down. So it some, takes some adjustment with that. Another downside, the, the UI is a little bit different in that if when I was you know doing some YouTube stuff I found to get into the actual YouTube studio you couldn't use the app version you actually had to go in Safari and try to use the desktop version it took some manipulation to get around to do that for me to go in and, and make some of the changes I need to make on the back end of YouTube but ultimately I got it to work and once I figured it out it was fine um, but it did it was a little bit of a learning curve so just be careful that you want to set up some time for that um, but overall, I think this is the answer for me. Um, I think that if I travel with this and the mouse, that should do it for me. If I have the extra room and I don't have a lot of clothes, would I pack a keyboard? Yes, I would. I would recommend if you have the resources for it and you don't already, if you haven't already spent thousands of dollars on keyboards like I did, to go ahead and get the, 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 the Magic Keyboard. Obviously, that's going to give you the ultimate experience that it was built for. It. Um, I'm opting not to do it for now just because I don't want to spend the extra couple hundred dollars. I already have like five keyboards here in the house. So my keyboard of choice that I'm going to travel with is this here. This is my new fee um, Air 75. It's a pretty slim keyboard. Whether I want to take the case or not, I don't know. That remains to be seen. Um, but it is pretty lightweight. It is pretty slim. Um, it works great with the iPad. I found this experience is pretty optimal. You know, if I wanted to take the case that I could use this to prop up the iPad as well because it works as an iPad stand and it works pretty good. It's pretty strength. It, you know, has a lot of strength. It's pretty firm. So that's what I would do if I had the extra space and I could afford to put that in there. Ultimately, I can get by without it, but I would prefer to have it. So 
there you go. So ultimately, does the iPad work as a sole travel device for content creators and busy professionals? Yes, I think it does. This is going to be my travel companion with me. The wife and I are going on a trip to Jer Turkey here in a couple months. It's going to be a longer trip. It's going to be for about two weeks. I'm sure I'm going to have some type of carry-on with me, so I'll make sure I pack the mouse and the keyboard so I can make sure I have everything I need to be creative and productive while I'm out. But for the short little trips, probably just take the iPad itself with the pencil, and I'm good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to follow me on my journey, want to know all of my ups and downs, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You can get updates of where I am with my book, follow me along, get some tips and trips along the way. And if you're looking for ways where you can skill up and improve your life and business, go from ordinary guy to an extraordinary life, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like this video. I'll be anxious to hear your comments. You know, what has been your experience? Are you a, are you a Windows type of person or are you an Apple person? Have you tried the iPad? What has been your experience? Comment down below. I'm your boy Paul. It's been a pleasure sharing my journey with you. Hopefully you'll be willing to share your journey with me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. See you next time, guys. Take care.